Hi, I'm James Gardner, Student Financial Assistance Advisor here at Tri-C Metropolitan Campus. I am one of the talented and one of the many talented financial aid advisors here at Tri-C, and I'm going to show you how to get more from your financial aid. Make sure you apply early. Complete the free application for federal student aid at www.fafsa.ed.gov. Remember, www.fafsa.ed.gov. The reason being is because the first letter in FAFSA is free. You do not want to pay for this application. If you go to fafsa.com, you're going to get charged. So make sure you go to www.fafsa.ed.gov. Uh, we do have priority deadlines, as you can see. You want to get it in early because that gives us ample time to process your information. And late applicants, if you are late, getting your information into us. We cannot ensure you that your aid will be processed in time for your classes, so you may have to secure a payment with the enrollment center just to hold yourself in class. Once we receive your application, so you went online, you submitted your FAFSA, we did receive it here at Tri-C, you want to know your status, so check your status. We're gonna list red flags. These are all the documents that are required for submission so we can process your aid during peak periods, which is two weeks before your classes begin and two weeks after your classes begin. That's when we want to get that information in. We actually want it earlier than that, but that's when it takes the longest for that information to process. So that's why you want to get it early. You want to submit it early to us so we can get it done. Your information could take total up to four weeks to be processed. So make sure you do get it in early to avoid having to deal with the peak period and the longer waits for your information to be processed. So you submitted your application, you submitted all of your documents needed from the red flags that were listed. We have everything, we have processed everything. So now you have green checks because you checked your status, you checked your email address, your email address, you checked your messages on your MyTriC space, you're ready to go, we're ready to move forward and authorize your aid. So once you've seen green checks, you see that everything is processed, we're ready to go, we're ready to move forward with your aid if eligible. Authorization of aid, what is it? This occurs when all requirements have been met based on your funding source. So basically grants, loans, scholarships, once we receive all of your information, we have all of your documents submitted, we have all green check marks, we're able to move forward in the process. So once we have it, your student account will be updated with a total authorization of A based on your enrollment, which means that however many credits you have, we're going to update your aid accordingly with your credits. All right, so your access funding will be placed towards your authorized aid and allow you to be able to purchase educational items with the access funding. For example, your Pell Grant for students who are full-time, which means 12 credit hours, you're in county, um, which is your tuition charge. So full-time students who are full Pell Grant eligible receives $2,775 per semester. All right, we factored, we take that, we factor that in, we look at your tuition charge, which is at $1,094.64, that's based on 12 credits, um, and you're also in county. Um, after we subtract that from your Pell Grant, you have $1,680.36 remaining. So when you have that remaining difference, that's your access funding. From there, we take that and we authorize your aid. So we use that access funding to authorize your aid and that difference can be used to purchase your educational expenses and it also can be charged to your student account, which is going to be. Any excess funding that you use will be charged directly to your student account. Types of authorization. Book authorizations is one of your authorizations that you have. Um, they are set initially for students to use on their MyTriC Card. So once we do your book authorization, we will place funding onto your MyTriC card to use. Now it will directly come out of your student accounting. So when you swipe your card, it directly comes straight from your account. So it goes right onto your accounting. So 
it's not actual funds that you can take on and off the card. It's just a credit that's placed on your card that you use to buy items. And once you swipe your card, it comes, it goes directly onto your student account. But all your financial aid requirements must be met. All right. You're eligible for assistance. You're meeting all the standards of academic progress, which means that you are maintaining a 2.0 GPA or higher, and you're completing at least 67% of your classes at all times. Um, for those who are new students, you do not fall under the, regula under the regulations of the standards of academic progress until your second semester here at Tri-C, unless, unless you do not do well, bad all F grades in your class, your first semester, then you know, you may fall victim to the standards of academic progress, but you wanna generally keep a 2.0 or higher and 67% or higher completion rate and you'll do well. But your classes also have to be registered at the time. So because your book voucher will be set according to the number of credits that you have. So make sure you're registered, make sure you have a 2.0 GPA or higher and complete 67% of your classes at all times. Make sure all your green checks are there, everything is submitted, and therefore your authorization will be then added to your Tri-C card. Book authorization amounts. So here's an example of your book authorization amounts. You're eligible for your $2,775 in grant, you're full pill eligible, you're a full-time student taking 12 credits and you live in county. Um, Here's an example. For those students who have zero to five credits, you're eligible for $213, six to eight credits, $425, nine to 11 credits, $638, 12 or more, $850. That's your book account. That's your book voucher that will be placed onto your Tri-C ID card. Again, it goes straight into your student accounting. So the minute you swipe the card, it's placed right on your student account, all right? It's not money that you can to add on or take off is something that comes directly out of your account. We put it there because it is access, all right? It's excess funds. It's after we already factor in your tuition and the money that is left over. Now remember, for your book vouchers, you can only use it in the bookstore. As far as your book vouchers, you cannot purchase any other materials outside of books and materials for educational purpose, any gifts, any uh, clothing items are not permitted for purchasing in the bookstore and using your book authorization to do so. Purchasing versus renting versus borrowing, all right? The Barnes & Noble bookstore purchases here, they offer online ordering, so make sure you order early if you're gonna do online ordering. It gives you the opportunity to decide whether you want new or used books. Uh, used books obviously cost less, uh, but it gives you the power to choose which one you wanna do. Um, they do carry and order all books for all classes and instructors request. So anything an instructor requests for their class, it is available at the Barnes & Noble bookstore. Um, they also offer book rentals, which you would need a major credit card from. So make sure you have a major credit card if you decide you want to rent books because it's something that will be needed. You cannot rent a book on your My Tri c authorization, your book authorization. We can actually pay the fee with your Tri-C your Tri-C ID card, you can pay the fee, but you cannot actually rent the book because if there is something that happens with the book, you're gonna be held responsible for it, which means that you're gonna to have to pay them back. You're gonna end up using your credit card to do so. So that's why it's important to have a credit card to do so. But you wanna make sure you do consider renting the books because renting the books will save you money. Book rentals typically are half the price of buying a book new. So something to consider. You also want to consider the Tri-C library as well. We do offer Ohio Link. Uh, we also offer um, books on reserve too. So a lot of the books that the professors have for the classes are actually on reserve in the library as well. Something to be conscious of. Borrowing books from the library. Make sure you contact one of our libraries. They can actually help you and add any, ass any assistance that is necessary for you. Here we have listed each campus and the phone numbers to them so you can actually call them up 
um, but you want to make sure you do pursue the library as well. It is another option. You don't have to buy books out of the bookstore necessarily. You can use the libraries. They do have all the information available at the libraries for you. Um, so make sure you do check that out if need be. It's another option for you, okay? Other charges. We do have transportation charges here. We have parking passes, daily, weekly, monthly, semester. Um, also, RTA passes, daily, weekly, monthly, U-Pass. You can only spend up to $240 on your passes, whether it's parking passes or bus passes. Your limit is $240, so however you decide to do it, whatever combination you decide to do it in, you have a $240 limit as to what you can use in your excess funds. Remember, it's after your tuition is factored out of your grant, after your book, authorization is factor out of that as well that's your access funds which you would use towards your parking passes your bus passes your meal plans and your dining dollars all right that's what's left over so your access funds are those so make sure you do keep that in mind that your access funds will cover parking passes meal plans um, and is separate from your book authorizations is also coming directly out of your student accounting uh, so make sure you're conscious of that. But remember, $240 is the maximum you can use, whether parking pass or bus pass. Other charges. Meal plans. You can use up to $100 in vending machine purchases and up to $300 in dining dollars. So with your access funds, again, separate from your book authorization, after your tuition has been factored out of your grant and or loan and or scholarship that you may have, uh, Whatever's left over, you have limits. $300, dining dollars, $100 vending machine can be used, comes directly out of your student accounting because it's your access funds. Example of charges and credits. So we're going to give you an example here. There's your $2,775 pill grant. That's your $1,094.64 tuition charge. Remember, you're 12 credits and you're in county. Uh, you decide to use $600 from your book voucher rather than using the entire 850 remember it's directly from your it goes directly to your student accounting so instead of showing the whole 850 it's only going to show you the $600 that you use you decided to buy a U pass for $240 you decided to use $50 on vending dollars and hundred dollars on your meal plan so total was left over after all of these expenses are paid, it's $690.36. That is your possible expense check, also known as your refund check. That's what you could receive after all of your tuition charges are paid. Be, uh, all your tuition charges are paid and all of your other charges which came from your access funds also covered. Changes to your Pell Grant. So for the 2012-13 academic year there has been changes to your Pell Grant you had 12 full-time disbursements starting in the 2012-13 year their lifetime limits so per the Department of Education you have a lifetime limit of Pell Grant which you can actually use and it's over the course of your entire academic career which means that if you were a student in the 80s 90s 2000s you could possibly have used your entire 12 lifetime disbursement of grant over that period of time, which means that going forward in the 2012-13 academic year, you could possibly not even be eligible for Pell Grant and be a loan only student from that point. But you have 12 full-time disbursements of Pell Grant to use to obtain a bachelor's degree from the 2012-13 academic year moving forward, but it is retroactive, which means it covers your entire academic career. It goes back to when you started until this date, and it will count. You will find out later from the Department of Education how many semesters you have remaining because they did do their homework, they did count. Um, as far as repeat courses, if you pass a class and then you fail the class, the second time you pass a class, let's say with a D, um, you take the class again because you were not satisfied and you decide and you fail that class the next time you change the next time you actually take that class you would not have financial aid to cover 
that particular class. That is also per the Department of Education. That is one of the changes for your 2012-13 academic year as well. If you fail the class and you take it and you fail it again, you can take it again for a third time and actually have aid to cover. The only difference between the two is if you pass the class and then you fail the class the second time, then the third time around you are no longer eligible for aid. It's only if you pass the class the first time, you're allotted one more opportunity to take the class and use financial aid to cover it. Whether you pass the class or not, if you decide to take the class the third time, you would not be eligible for aid. If you fail the class the first time, you decide to take it again. If you pass or fail it, basically, if you fail it, really, um, you can take the class a third time and have financial aid cover it. If you do pass it on your second time, you still have another chance, opportunity to take it again. And if you pass it that time or fail that time, if you take it a fourth time, you're, you're not eligible to actually use financial aid to cover it on the fourth time. Borrowing loans. Make sure you understand what you're doing when you borrow loans um, in the first place. So you want to you make sure you're conscious of your loan eligibility. So um, consolidate your loan, your eligible loans if you can, but you want to contact your lender to discuss your options there. All right. As uh, far as your debt management, you want to make sure you develop a budget and only borrow what you need. You don't want to take access funds unless you have to. You don't want to really build up debt just because this is money that you will have to pay back. OK, so make sure you're conscious of that. Uh, you want to also make sure that uh, you consider all options. So all options of borrowing loans means that you want to do your homework on each loan. You want to know the difference between your subsidized loan and your unsubsidized loan, uh, which basically is your subsidized loan has no interest until you start to pay the loan back. Your unsubsidized loan has interest from day one and it builds the entire time the loan is out plus repayment. It's something to be conscious of. You want to at all costs avoid, avoid default. Very important to avoid default. The reason why you want to avoid default is because a defaulted loan will prevent you from attending any other institution in the country because you borrowed this loan, you failed to pay back the federal government who lent you this loan. So now they're saying they're preventing you from moving forward in your educational process because you failed to pay them back the loan that you borrowed. So you want to avoid default at all costs. There are various different options out there for you. You have deferment that you can use. You have forbearance that you can use. But more importantly, you want to make sure you speak to your lenders to find out what can be done, because as long as you communicate to your lender that you are in a position of where you have this loan, your repayment has began, you can't afford to pay this loan back, you need help. You want to talk to the lender. Make sure you talk to them. They can help you. They can help you avoid default by offering you options like forbearance, like deferment. Very, 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 very helpful. There's so many options out there for you. Consolidation is another one, like as I mentioned before, that you can use. So make sure you do talk to your lender about it. Also, I know I would be remiss if I didn't tell you there's another change for your 2012, 2013 um, financial aid award year. It's the ability to benefit test. Uh, it exists here for students who do not have GDs or high school transcripts, high school diplomas. You want to make sure that if you are going to attend the summer semester, that you come down and you take the ability to benefit test if you do not have a GED or a high school diploma because after July 1st of 2012, the ability to benefit test will no longer exist. It's going away, which means that you must have a GED or you must have your high school diploma in order to be able to take college level classes and have financial aid pay for it. So the last day to do this is June 30th. So make sure if you're gonna to go to summer semester, if you don't have a GED, if you don't have your high school diploma, you come and take this ability to benefit test, you must pass it in order for it to constitute as either your high school diploma or your GED certificate, and you can use it to be able to take college level courses. Those students who attend college for the first time after July 1st, 2012, 
you must have either high school diploma or GED certificate in order to be able to use financial aid towards college level courses. Um, there are some other rules involved for students who have attended college prior to July 1 to have college credits. Um, you're exempt from this rule, but that's the only loophole. You have to have attended college prior to July 1, 2012 and have college credits without having your GED and or high school diploma in order to be exempt from this rule. But all students after July 1st must have either high school certificate or high school diploma or GED certificate. Please, if you're going to do summer, make sure you come down and take that ability to benefit test uh, before June 30th because after July 1, it no longer exists. I am James Gardner, Student Financial Aid Advisor here at Tri-C. Uh, feel free to come see me or any other of our talented advisors here. We are all helpful. We can all help you get through this. We can all help you be able to get more from your financial aid. Thank you very much.